Welcome back everyone. The next decade is bringing a new chapter in space travel, where rockets that once depended on explosive chemical reactions are being replaced by engines that breathe plasma. The goal is simple, yet transformative. Instead of sending small bursts of power for a few minutes at launch, these systems will produce continuous thrust for months, carrying heavy cargo between planets using only electricity and magnetism. The most advanced designs, the VAS IMR engine and the Hall effect thruster, are now being prepared for the first real interplanetary supply missions by the year 2028. Please subscribe now. Chemical propulsion remains the only method capable of lifting cargo off Earth. However, once beyond the atmosphere, the need for extreme thrust fades. What matters then is efficiency. Traditional rocket propellants consume enormous mass for every kilometer per second of speed gained, limiting payloads and raising mission cost. Plasma propulsion changes that trade off by converting electric energy directly into motion. It cannot match the explosive power of chemical engines, but it excels in endurance. When used over long distances, its small but steady acceleration multiplies into enormous speed, allowing spacecraft to reach Mars with far less propellant than ever before. The Hall Effect Thruster is already a proven design, used on hundreds of satellites and deep space probes. Its principle begins with a simple chamber shaped like a ring. Into this ring a neutral gas such as xenon is released. Electric fields strip electrons from the gas, turning atoms into positively charged ions. Magnetic coils positioned around the chamber confine the electrons in a circular path forming a rotating current. This current creates a field that continuously accelerates the ions out of the chamber at tremendous speed. The ions exit in a focused jet, producing thrust while the electrons are redirected back to neutralize the exhaust. The entire process is silent and steady, capable of operating for years. What makes the Hall Effect Thruster ideal for Mars cargo transport is its efficiency at moderate power levels. Each thruster can deliver a specific impulse five to ten times higher than that of chemical engines, meaning it uses fuel much more sparingly. Modern designs run on kilowatts of power, but research centers in Europe and Japan are scaling these systems into the megawatt range. Clustering multiple thrusters together allows higher thrust while maintaining long operational life. Engineers at ESA and JAXA have demonstrated high-power hall arrays for large satellites, and these same designs will serve as orbital insertion engines for interplanetary cargo vehicles. VASIMA, which stands for Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket, represents the next step. Its approach is modular, combining magnetic confinement with radio wave heating. Inside its long cylindrical chamber, a neutral gas such as argon, krypton or hydrogen is first ionized by a burst of radio frequency energy. This creates a low temperature plasma. The plasma then enters a second stage where a stronger radio frequency field heats it to temperatures exceeding a million degrees. Superconducting magnets surrounding the chamber hold the plasma away from the walls, preventing it from melting the engine. Finally, the plasma is directed out of a magnetic nozzle, where it expands and accelerates to produce thrust. The name Variable Specific Impulse comes from the ability to tune performance. By altering power input and magnetic field geometry, engineers can choose between high thrust and high efficiency. When rapid acceleration is needed, more power is applied, increasing thrust at the cost of fuel use. When conserving propellant is critical, the power can be reduced to produce a slower but far more efficient exhaust. This flexibility allows VASIMAR to adapt to mission phases, accelerating quickly out of orbit and then cruising efficiently through deep space. No moving parts touch the plasma, giving the system extraordinary durability. The engineering challenge is power. A single Vasima engine may require hundreds of kilowatts or even megawatts of electricity. On Earth, this is trivial, but in space, every watt must come from solar arrays or compact reactors. Ad Astra Rocket Company in Texas, working with NASA, has already tested a 100 kilowatt prototype known as the VX200SS. The test demonstrated steady operation for many hours, showing that the technology can run continuously without damaging its magnets or antennas. The company's next goal is a 200-kilowatt flight version for near-Earth demonstration. 
the lessons learned will feed directly into the 2028 Mars cargo plans. NASA's 2028 cargo run refers to a proposed demonstration mission that will use electric propulsion to send automated supply modules from Earth orbit to Mars. The spacecraft will not carry astronauts, but will test whether plasma engines can move large payloads, such as construction materials, power systems and life support hardware. By proving that steady electric thrust can transport heavy cargo across interplanetary space, NASA aims to create the foundation for a reusable transport fleet. The success of this cargo run will show that the same technology can later be scaled for crewed missions and permanent settlement infrastructure. To power such engines, NASA and its partners are studying large rollout solar panels, similar to those used on the International Space Station, but scaled up several times. Lightweight composite structures will unfold in orbit to provide tens of thousands of square meters of collection area. In parallel, small nuclear fission systems such as NASA's kilopower reactor are being refined to provide steady electricity regardless of sunlight. A single kilopower unit can produce up to 10 kilowatts. Several combined units could feed a VASI-MR engine for continuous thrust. Both options will likely be tested before the first Mars supply launch. When comparing Hall and VCMR engines, their differences become clear. The Hall thruster is simpler and easier to mass produce. It works best at lower voltages and uses heavy noble gases that are easy to store. Vesimar is more complex but capable of operating with a wider range of propellants and much higher exhaust speeds. A practical mission design may use both. Hall thrusters could handle delicate maneuvers near Earth and Mars, while Vesimar drives the long cruise in between. Together they create a hybrid propulsion architecture where each technology plays to its strength. NASA's concept for the 2028 cargo mission involves a transport vehicle assembled in Earth orbit. The spacecraft would consist of a central truss carrying multiple plasma engines, large power modules, and cargo containers attached along its length. Robotic arms, similar to those on the space station, would assist in loading supplies ranging from construction equipment to life support materials. Once assembled, the ship would fire its plasma engines gradually over several weeks, spiraling away from Earth's gravity well. Instead of a brief burn, the thrust would continue nearly non-stop for the entire journey gently pushing the ship toward Mars at increasing speed. By using plasma propulsion, the mission avoids the need for massive chemical fuel tanks. The ship could carry more cargo per launch and rely on small refueling units placed at depots in Earth orbit. Because xenon, krypton or hydrogen propellants are inert and non-toxic, handling and storage are much simpler. The continuous thrust profile also reduces the stress on the spacecraft structure. Instead of enduring explosive jolts, the entire system experiences gentle acceleration. Guidance computers can make constant adjustments, maintaining a precise trajectory without large correction burns. The timeline for reaching Mars would still take several months, but the cost per kilogram of delivered cargo would drop dramatically. Plasma engines are, by their nature, inherently reusable. After arriving, the ship could break using the same propulsion system, unload supplies, and return to Earth orbit for another cycle. This makes them attractive for building a permanent logistics network, rather than just one-time missions. Over the long term, multiple plasma cargo ships could operate in a continuous loop, carrying components for habitats, fuel processors, and scientific modules that will form the backbone of human settlement. International involvement in this development is accelerating. ESA's propulsion division is working on high-power haul arrays capable of sustained operation at hundreds of kilowatts. JAXA is experimenting with carbon-free propellants suitable for deep space environments. Universities in Poland, Italy and South Korea are contributing magnetic field modeling and thermal management research. Meanwhile, NASA's Glenn Research Center continues to refine power conditioning electronics that can handle the rapid switching required for plasma generation. The cumulative result is a network of specialized programs converging on a single objective of sustained electric propulsion beyond Earth orbit. One of the most important challenges is heat rejection. Even though these engines are more efficient than chemical rockets, they still convert a portion of power into waste heat. In the vacuum of space, 
there is no air to carry heat away, so radiators must emit infrared energy directly. Engineers are developing lightweight radiator panels coated with advanced ceramics and heat conducting fluids. Some designs include rotating panels that can be oriented away from sunlight to improve cooling. Managing this heat effectively will be vital to ensure months of continuous operation without damaging components. Magnetic field design is another key frontier. Plasma confinement depends on maintaining stable magnetic lines that guide the charged particles smoothly through the engine. If the field geometry fluctuates, plasma can escape and erode components. Researchers use supercomputers to simulate the shape of these fields and test them with small laboratory thrusters. In some experiments, magnetic nozzles made of superconducting coils have shown nearly perfect conversion of thermal energy into directed thrust. These refinements could double the efficiency of next-generation plasma engines compared to those currently in orbit. The human factor is also being considered. While the 2028 missions will carry only cargo, future crewed ships may use the same propulsion architecture. Continuous acceleration could simulate artificial gravity by producing a gentle push for months at a time. The smooth ride would reduce health risks associated with long exposure to weightlessness. Electric propulsion systems also eliminate the risk of volatile combustion, making life support and structural safety easier to manage during extended missions. The design lessons learned from cargo runs will feed directly into the first crewed Mars transfer vehicles planned for the early 2030s. Plasma propulsion may also transform near-Earth operations. Once the large engines are proven, smaller variants can be installed on reusable tugs that move satellites between orbits or retrieve defunct hardware, because they consume only small amounts of inert gas and draw power from solar panels. These tugs can operate continuously for years without refueling. The same principle can extend to lunar logistics, supporting the construction of orbital stations and surface bases. Every success in deep space will expand their range of application closer to home. If the schedule holds, ground tests of a combined VASIMA and Hall propulsion platform will take place around 2027, followed by orbital demonstrations. These trials will confirm the stability of power systems, magnetic containment and exhaust directionality over long durations. Once proven, the engines will be integrated into cargo modules already under design by NASA contractors. The 2028 launch would mark the first time a plasma-driven vessel leaves Earth orbit bound for Mars with a significant payload. It will not travel quickly at first, but its speed will rise steadily, a constant acceleration that builds silently until it surpasses anything achieved by chemical propulsion. By 2029, the performance data from these missions could rewrite propulsion engineering textbooks. It will verify that electric engines can maintain months of steady thrust without degradation, that power systems can scale beyond laboratory limits, and that continuous low force acceleration can move industrial payloads across interplanetary distances. It will also demonstrate the practicality of hybrid propulsion, where both Hall and Vase IMR engines cooperate in one architecture. What began as a laboratory experiment in plasma physics will emerge as the foundation of sustained space industry. The sight of a glowing plasma plume pushing a massive cargo ship through the dark void will symbolize a turning point in human capability. It means that energy, not combustion, has become the driving force of expansion beyond Earth. By 2028, the first operational plasma ships could already be cruising toward Mars, silently accelerating across the vacuum, carrying the materials that will build future settlements. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.